Hello everyone, welcome back to our channel. On the 5th of January, Alaska Airlines Flight 1282, on route from Portland to Ontario, suffered a blowout. Less than 10 minutes after takeoff, an unused cabin door unexpectedly detached, creating a gaping hole in the fuselage and causing a dramatic drop in the cabin pressure. The aircraft was immediately diverted back to Portland for an emergency landing. It is the same Boeing 737 MAX, which stands at the focal point again. Following the incident, federal officials in the US grounded all Boeing 737 MAX 9 planes for inspection. Many of us remember 737 MAX for the most significant crisis in the aviation history. Two fatal crashes that occurred within a span of five months and claimed a total of 346 lives. Is 737 MAX the most unsafe aircraft in the modern aviation era? Did Boeing prioritize competition over the safety of the 737 MAX? In this video, let's explore how competition led to disaster. Boeing is an American multinational corporation founded in 1916. It offers a wide range of products, but it is renowned for its commercial airplanes. Since 1974, the company has successfully delivered over 17,000 commercial aircraft worldwide. Boeing's primary competitor in the commercial jetliner industry is Airbus, established in 1970 as a consortium by French and German aerospace firms, later joined by Spanish and British companies. Currently, there are over 13,000 Airbus commercial jetliners in active service. With the global travel market expanding, the rivalry between Boeing and Airbus intensified, each vying for a larger share in the flourishing industry. The competition between these two companies is often likened to the iconic Coke versus Pepsi comparison. Boeing holds a market cap of $140 billion, surpassing Airbus, which stands at $123 billion. Notably, Boeing's market cap reached a peak of $248 billion in February 2019. However, this figure experienced a substantial decline following two fatal crashes within a span of five months contributing to the current valuation. Both offer a wide range of products, including single aisle and wide body aircraft with varying capacities and ranges. Within Boeing's diverse models, the 737 series stands out as the best selling, with a remarkable 11,615 aircraft deliveries, constituting 55% of its total sales. In contrast, Airbus A320 series emerges as a strong competitor to Boeing 737 model with a total of 11,182 aircraft deliveries, making up an impressive 74% of its overall sales. During the late 90s and early 2000s, the revolution of low-cost airlines reshaped the landscape of air travel. A predominant focus among airlines was directed towards minimizing operational costs, leading to a demand for aircrafts with increased passenger capacity, enhanced fuel efficiency, extended nautical miles range, and reduced maintenance expenses. This intensified the competition between the two major players. By the early 2000s, Boeing's market share was steadily decreasing, while Airbus was on the rise. From 2003, Airbus overtook Boeing in terms of annual deliveries driven by the success of the A320 and A330 and was leading till 2011. In 2010, Airbus marked a significant milestone with the introduction of the A320neo, a favorite option for airlines looking for fuel-efficient narrow-body aircraft. Meanwhile, Boeing faced a pivotal moment grappling with a decision since 2006 regarding the future of the 737NG model. 
The deliberation centered around two options, either introducing an entirely new airplane to succeed the 737NG or opting for a re-engineering approach, incorporating more efficient engines and other modifications for a next generation model. In the spring of 2011, Boeing encountered a significant challenge as American Airlines, a loyal customer for over a decade, considered choosing Airbus over Boeing. Ready to place an order for hundreds of new aircraft, American Airlines CEO Gerard Arpe informed Boeing's former leader, James McNerney, that a deal with Airbus was imminent. Faced with this threat, Boeing had to act swiftly to retain the business. In a strategic shift, Boeing abandoned the idea of developing an entirely new passenger plane, a process that could take a decade. Instead, it opted to revamp the 737 model with a commitment to complete the update in just six years. The result was the birth of the 737 MAX in August 2011. The 737 MAX maintained a significant degree of commonality with its predecessors, allowing for the utilization of the same pool of pilots and ground staff on the new model aircraft. This approach, coupled with minimal supplementary training, a brief tablet-based course instead of simulated training, not only facilitated a seamless transition for pilots, but also enabled Boeing to bypass the extensive certification process typically associated with introducing an entirely new aircraft. In January 2016, the Boeing 737 MAX embarked on its inaugural test flight, secured certification from the FAA in March 2017, and delivered the first aircraft to a customer in May 2017. By October 2018, 230 of these planes had been delivered to 28 different customers globally. However, tragedy struck in October 2018 when a Boeing 737 MAX crashed into the Java Sea shortly after departing Jakarta, resulting in the loss of all 189 lives. Despite the disaster, Global Airlines continued operating the MAX, and Boeing persisted in manufacturing and delivering more planes. Within a mere five-month interval, in March 2019, Ethiopian Airlines Flight 302 tragically crashed shortly after takeoff from Addis Ababa, claiming the lives of all 157 passengers and crew. Following the initiation of a chain of events involving the 737 MAX aircraft, China's aviation regulator takes the lead in globally grounding the aircraft a decision echoed by others, including the US FAA. In October 2019, Kevin McAllister, the head of Boeing Commercial Airplanes Division, was ousted. And in December 2019, Dennis Moylenberg, the former CEO, departs in the aftermath of the crashes. By January 2020, Boeing faces its most significant assembly line fault in over two decades, suspending production of the 737 MAX. An 18-month inquiry in September 2020 concludes that the MCAS software system played a pivotal role in both incidents, grabbing control from pilots and hindering their efforts to save the aircraft. Boeing's lack of transparency about the new software and its impact on pilot training is revealed. In November 2020, regulators in the US cleared the Boeing 737 MAX to fly again, ending a 20-month global grounding. However, in January 2021, the US Department of Justice accused Boeing of conspiracy to defraud the United States regarding the 737 MAX certification. This led to the company agreeing to pay over $2.5 billion in penalties. Despite these developments, issues still persist. In April 2023, 
Boeing halts deliveries of certain 737 MAX planes due to a new supply quality problem in Boeing non-compliant fittings. Similar quality problem was again experienced in August 2023. On December 12, 2023, a Ryanair flight experiences an engine failure on its journey between Manchester in the UK and Tenerife in Spain. The most recent incident, occurring on January 5th, involves an Alaska air flight. The sequence of events that followed this incident includes the safe landing of the plane, the commencement of an investigation by the NTSB, the issuance of an emergency airworthiness directed by the FAA, and the temporary grounding of the certain Boeing 737 MAX 9 aircrafts worldwide for inspections. Over 170 planes were affected, leading to the cancellation of nearly 700 flights nationwide. Boeing stock experiences a 9% decline on the New York Stock Exchange, and United Airlines announces the discovery of loose bolts during its inspection of its 737 MAX 9 fleet. On Wednesday 10th of January, Boeing CEO acknowledges mistakes and pledges transparency in the ongoing investigation. The fate of the 737 MAX appears uncertain, with clarity expected only upon the release of the investigation outcomes. If you enjoy our video, kindly hit the subscribe button for more content like this. To view our latest videos, click on the following link.